Carlos knows him, we call him Manteco. Mantequilla, butter, because he was real white. He had green eyes. He looked American. We were just like brothers. Grisel didn't like him too much. That she used to tell me that he was real greedy, that she didn't trust him too much. That's one of the reasons they never knew where she lived. I was the only one that knew where she lived. I was called that afternoon to her house, Griselda. She said, well, you were the only. Did you run into somebody? I said, yeah, I did. I ran into Cachetón. Cachetón was one of her customers. And what did he say? Uh, that he had a really important job if I wanted, you know, a hit, a double hit. Worth a lot of money, a lot, a lot of money, more than I ever made. And she said, do you know if he talked to anybody else? I said, I believe so. I uh, caught him talking to uh, Manteco. She said, well, guess what? The hit that he wants you to do is me and Daryl. That's what he wants to do. Apparently, he, he was in a lot of debt with Griselda. And um, she said, you got to take care of both of that. If you cannot take care, let me know, and I send my crew to do to do. Take was my best friend. Kill my best friend. To this day, I don't have no proof that Manteco really was going to carry out the hit. I doubt it very much because I'm worried too much about friends. But with her, all she needed was a doubt. It was hard, especially with my daughter, my stepdaughter, Lisa. She was nine, so she had a little more sense than my other kids. She see guns. She see guys coming to the house with guns. And she started asking questions. It, was, it wasn't easy. A lot of the money that I was making, I was giving to my mother-in-law. I set an account in Panama and put money away for my kids because I never thought I was coming to prison. I figured I was going to get killed. That's what I, I used to go to bed every night thinking, maybe it's tomorrow. I get in the shootout or I put my guard down and somebody's smarter than me and I get shot in the back of the head, sitting in a restaurant, which almost happened several times. That's why I used to live to the fullest because it might be the last day. Papa over here, he used to be in the force for Griselda. Apparently he ripped her off and he went on his own. And that's one thing that she, she didn't forget or forgive. She was a war now. There is a feud going on right now that would put the Hatfields and the McCoys to shame. She was losing a lot of people. So she asked me if I could get some more help. She said, make sure that they know what they get into. Don't bring me to like Manteco and Chicho. You know? I said, you know, I left that alone. I said, yeah, I got a couple friends up there in Chicago. They're Marilitos. They don't, they don't play around. She said, that's just what I need. And I mean, they have a reputation, you know. It's very, very dangerous people. One of them, Guillermo Ferrales, they call him Pepe. I talked to him and I said, why don't you fly down here so we could talk in person. And he came down and I said, you got a, you got my friend? He said, yeah, I got another one. He said, me Miguel Perez. We were in prison together in Cuba. And we did a lot of shit in Cuba. I said, well, he, you think he'd be able to kill somebody? He said, yeah, hell yeah, he'd done it before. Miguelito, yes. This is a picture that was taken of him shortly after he, he arrived here in 1982 in the Mariel boat lift. He just was a thug. And he, he was one of the scariest guys I've ever really encountered in my career. He was more physically intimidating. He was bigger than Rivy, stronger physically than Rivy. He's the kind of guy that you look at and you think to yourself, you know, this guy could snap any moment and, uh, and go off and probably just snap your neck. So I told you something, that I, I had three more guys, two Marilitos and a Cuban. one you know, Jesus. They're your crew. You're responsible for them. Big Lito essentially worked for Rivy. Once he got down here, he proved himself to be reliable and ruthless, and they used him pretty much in everything they went on. Johnny Castro homicide. The victim is a three-year-old, appears to be a Latin male with multiple gunshot wounds. They were aiming for his father, but missed, and they killed a child. Shot just because he happened to be sitting next to his father, who was Colombian and a target of some of the cocaine cowboys. Miguelito was present for that. As well as the execution-style murders of a man and woman six months later. The Lorenzo double homicide, where the kids were left on the scene with the dead parents' bodies. Miguelito was definitely present for that. The fact that a baby would be left to crawl on his mother's bloody body, uh, I can't think of anything more abhorrent than that. I really can't. Miguel Perez, he's believed to have been involved in not only those murders, but another one at a soccer field in Miami Lakes. These soccer field murders took place about a month apart. The body was found right here within 15 yards. His car was parked right in this lot. Unknown Latin subject walked up to him, point blank range, shot him in the back of the head. This turned out to be Edgar Restrepo. This was our second soccer field homicide in as many months. They were commonly referred to as Pele 1 and Pele 2. I thought that was kind of coarse, but uh, this turned out to be another Griselda Blanco hit, as was the soccer field homicide a month prior. 
Turns out both murders have been committed by Miguel Perez, Miguelito. I was out there at the scene of one. The policeman said soccer fields are now an unsafe place to be. But I think all of Miami was an unsafe place to be. Another was shot at the airport customs facility by a man on a motorcycle. These two guys came in a motor scooter and shot him down. So you know, welcome to Miami. A third was murdered, leaving a crowded department store. The Octavio Mejia homicide, who was more commonly known as Mano Mica. When Mejia left the shopping mall, they ambushed him. And he was shot numerous times. Another suspected victim of Griselda Blanco and Paco Sepulveda. Marta Gomez kidnapping shot her point blank in the back of the head, but a little bit too low, and she survived. This is just one more, you know, skirmish in the Griselda Blanco Mejia, you know, conflict. The war was picking up again, and this time it was in Colombia. In Colombia, a lot of blood has been spilled in feuds between the drug families. A war that has left over a hundred dead, some of them innocent bystanders. There was a lot of killing going on there. Medellin, Colombia, where it is common to have up to 12 killings a day. It is home for many of the assassins and victims who end up in Miami. Yeah, I was in Colombia looking for Papa. Rafiko answered the phone, talked to somebody on the phone, and then he says, uh, we know where he's at. I said, who? He said, Papa. It's about an hour from here. So got our weapons, got our cars. We drove by the outdoor cafe. It was about 10 of them, it was about 10 of us. We killed about three of them. We went on for about an hour. Over the three-day Christmas holiday, there were 35 murders here. In the outskirts of town during a January weekend, the bodies of 11 murder victims were found in garbage cans. Come back to Miami about 2 o'clock. They want to see me in Miami Lakes. It's really important. So we get up there, Miami Lakes, to uh, Max Memerstein's wife, Boutique, Christina Fashions. Walk in there, the whole group's there, Griselda, Dario. So I asked them what was going on, and she said that, uh, the Papa Mejia was on the next flight to Miami, right behind me, an hour difference. We were wondering if you could go get him at the airport. I said, no, not at the airport. That's a suicide mission. I don't do suicide missions. I get him outside, and then she said, no, I want, I want him to get hit inside the airport. I said, no. She offered, him, uh, offered me a half a million dollars. She reached under one of the tables and stuff and hands me a bayonet, 16-inch bayonet. I believe it was Max bought it in one of the U.S. Army uh, stores. It was all rusted. Oh, oh. She want him stabbed to death just because he's a pig and his nickname is the pig. They want him killed like a pig. You know, I just went along with it. I said, fine, but I ain't going to go in there and do this. So she said, well, we got somebody else that's going to do it. I said, who? She said, Miguel Perez. I told Miguel, I said, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to ride with you in the car to the airport. I'm going to go in the airport with you. Once we show you him, target, be on your own. The stabbing of Papo Mejia. Papo, of course, being an arch enemy of Griselda Blanco. Papa Mejia get a cast from his uh, knee to his uh, ankle, looking everywhere. I guess he was looking for his enemies, looking for us. And as he walked out from customs, a man came up with a bayonet and bayoneted him several times. It's, it's insane, really. And uh, obviously, it turned out that way because he was caught. I went in the car, I was driving back with uh, Darren. I told him, I said, I told you about this from the beginning. He said, if you think we should worry about Miguel talking? I said, he ain't going to talk. But he's in deep shit now. I don't know that any other organization can be attributed to the number of homicides that uh, go back to Griselda. I just don't. The caseload in the cocaine wars was, was unbelievable. I had never worked so hard in my life. This is what keeps us going, Cuban coffee. Drug traffickers have more manpower and equipment than police. We were constantly going to scenes, constantly going to cases, constantly going to trial. They know they're fighting a losing battle because they don't have the personnel or equipment to stay on top of drug traffickers. If they had asked me, how many people do you need, I couldn't even tell them how many people I needed. There are just too many homicides and so few cops. And many cops got fed up with it. I've had it. I've had it. I've been here 10 years. I've buried eight cops. It's all right if somebody pulls a gun on you and shoots you. Everybody's uh, all choked up for three days, so they bury you, throw a bunch of dirt over you, and let's go on. I plan on getting out in December. I hit my 10 years, and I'm gone. And when I leave South Florida, I don't care if it breaks off and floats down to South America, because I really don't care anymore. I said, screw this. I'm out of here, and they left. Twice the normal number of policemen have quit the Miami Police Department this year. And there was a rush to hire cops to fill these vacancies. Both Metro and Miami Police Departments are making a major push to fill the vacancies left in the wake of record resignation rates. Metro has even hired an outside firm to help boost minority recruiting. It used to be we just took the top of the barrel, now we take the entire barrel as far as applicants. But a lot of people got hired 
to be police officers that under ordinary circumstances would not have been hired. Back in July of 1985, uh, he